And then we come to this section in this chapter, which kind of seems to not really belong in this chapter, but it's in here. So formula mass. So the formula mass is the average mass of an individual molecule or formula unit. Um, we're going to see there's multiple masses. We've already seen atomic mass and molar mass of an element, right? And the molar mass is the mass of one mole. The atomic mass is the mass of one atom. The formula mass is the mass of the formula. So however the formula is written, the mass of that. It's sometimes called a molecular mass or a molecular weight. But you're just going to take the sum of the masses of each of the atoms in a single molecule or in a formula unit and add them all up together. So, yeah, if you need more information, it's down there. Let's do an example. Calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. And we're going to throw a little nomenclature practice in here. We need the formula. What's the formula for calcium nitrate? First question, what kind of a compound is it? Ionic, molecular, or acid? It's ionic because calcium is a metal. So then we're dealing with ions. So we've got calcium, and what charge does calcium ion take? Two plus because it's in group two. And then we have nitrate, and we should have that memorized, CaNO, I'm sorry, NO3 with a negative one charge. And to combine those together, we need two nitrates for every one calcium. So we put some shrink wrap around that and put the number of those on the outside. So there's the formula. To calculate the formula mass, we're going to look up the mass of a calcium atom and the mass of nitrogen. There's two of those. And how many oxygens are in the formula? Six. Because we have two of these units that are one nitrogen, three oxygens. So that gives us six oxygens. So we've got one calcium, uh, 40.08. What is the unit when we talk about the mass of an atom? Does an atom weigh 40 grams? AMU. AMU, atomic mass units. So this is, um, should be calculated in atomic mass units. And then we have two times the atomic mass of hydro, of that's not hydrogen, that's nitrogen. And six times the mass of oxygen. I have a lot of them memorized because I do this so much. This is my job. Um, I've memorized the four sig fig versions, but whatever your periodic table has that you're using, that's what you should use. So 40.08 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16. One sixty-four point one atomic mass units. And people sometimes disagree about whether this should be 164.1 or 164.10. And it depends on how you look at it. Um, if I look at adding 40.08 plus 14.01 plus 14.01, plus 16, plus 16, plus 16, plus 16, plus 16, plus 16, then I should have two decimal places because it's all adding, right? If you look at multiplying, sometimes um, this has four sig figs. When you multiply it by six, it may bump up to only have one decimal place then. And so then you're left with one decimal place at the end. So it's kind of how you look at it. Bottom line is when you do a molar mass or a formula mass, that's usually not going to limit the number of significant figures in your result if you're doing a calculation. 
And so you should not over round your formula masses. So on this one, writing the zero or not isn't going to make any difference, right? Um, do not round everything off to a whole number. That's going to cause some problems. With your formula masses, if you want to leave extras, um, if you're using a more um, detailed periodic table and you've got three or four significant uh, figures in the decimal places, go ahead and use them. Okay. We're not going to get hung up on formula mass sig figs. Questions? It's the mass and atomic mass units of one formula unit of calcium nitrate. How much would one mole of calcium nitrate weigh? Yeah, we just change it to grams. So one mole of that would be the same number, but grams instead of atomic mass units. That's the molar mass. So formula mass is the mass of a formula unit. That's atoms, individual atoms, so it's atomic mass units. The molar mass is the one we use the most. That's the mass in grams of one mole of molecules or formula units numerically equal to the formula mass. What's the molar mass of ammonia? What's the formula for ammonia? It's NH3. You need to know that guy. So the molar mass would be 14.01 grams, because in one mole of that, there's one mole of nitrogen, and there's three moles of hydrogen. wanted a unit. 14.01 plus 3 times 1.008. So the calculator says 17.034 grams. Normally, um, this wouldn't limit your your sig figs, but technically that would be the last significant figure on that one. Any questions? Calculating molar masses is something we're going to do a lot. So that should become old hat. We can use molar mass to count molecules by weighing. This is in conjunction with Avogadro's number. So if we have um, a mass of a substance, we can convert to moles using the molar mass, and then we can convert to the number of molecules using Avogadro's number. And so this is, this is how that would look. This is doing it in, in two steps. It could also be done in one step if instead of writing one mole here, you substitute the number of molecules. Let's do an example. Find the number of ibuprofen molecules in in a, a table. <laughs> Tables are not made out of ibuprofen. In a tablet containing 200 milligrams of ibuprofen, and, and there's the chemical formula. So molar mass here is going to be used as a conversion factor. So we're, we're given 200 milligrams of this compound, and we want number of atoms. So let's plan this out. Some of you may need to actually write out the plan. Others of you can make the plan up in your head and just go straight to the equation. Um, milligrams to atoms is not something we really want to do in one step. Sometimes combining things into a shorter problem results in mistakes, and then you have to do the whole thing over again. So that's not really shorter. Sometimes just take an extra step and get it right the first time is much faster. Well, milligrams aren't going to work, are they? We, we need to get this into grams. And then we have a choice. We can go grams directly to atoms, or we can go through moles. What do you want to do? Moles. So grams to moles, and then to atoms. So we're going to get all of our units in place first. 200 milligrams, 
we have three arrows. We need three conversion factors. I'm going to talk to you after lecture. I graded your worksheet on um, sig figs and some unit conversions and stuff, and we need to have an intervention before the exam for about half of you. So pay attention here, because this is a sort of calculation that some of you are having trouble with. Milligrams to grams to moles to atoms. Milligrams to grams to moles to atoms. This unit needs to be down here. It looks like a Q. That's not a Q. Milligrams and grams and moles. And we have to see one on the top, one on the bottom to cancel. I saw people canceling a gram on the top and a gram on the top. Those don't cancel. They multiply and you get gram squared. Mass squared is not any quantity I'm familiar with. Grams on top, grams on bottom. Milligrams on top, milligrams on bottom. Now this first one. Metric conversion. We're going to see a lot of these. They'll be just snuck into other things that you have to calculate, and so we have to get these straight. A lot of people uh, screwed some of these up on that worksheet. Think of it this way. One of the things, one of the important things about uh, conversion factors is that the numerator is equal to the denominator. They may not look equal, but they are equal. If we, if we go to something familiar, nope, that's wrong, 12 inches over 1 foot. 12 inches is the same as 1 foot. But there's different numbers and different letters. Yeah, but they mean the same thing. A foot is about this long. 12 inches is exactly the same length. Everybody okay with that? So we have 12 inches on the top and one foot on the bottom. Those are equal, and so this is numerically equal to 1. All of our conversion factors are equal to 1 because the numerator equals the denominator. It refers to the same thing. So when we get to these metric conversion factors, the way I teach in class is not the only way to do them. But it's a foolproof way. If you follow the pattern, it always works. And I think that's pretty good. So how do we do this? Well, if we have gram over gram, does that equal 1? Yeah. If we have milligram over milligram, does that equal 1? Yes. What does milli stand for? 10 to the minus 3rd. So m equals 10 to the minus 3. So what if I take this m and write what it means instead? Does that fraction still equal 1? Yeah, it does. If I, if I do it the other way and stick the, what it means with the prefix, now it doesn't equal 1 anymore. It's going to be wrong. Okay, so if you're shaky on the metric system, follow this pattern. Use the 10 to the somethings. The 10 to the something goes on the other side of the line from the prefix, and it will always work out. So in this fraction up here, where does the 10 to the minus third go? It goes with grams on top. So 10 to the minus third. So that was a refresher on metric units. What about this moles and grams? We have to figure it out. So we're given the formula. We need to find the mass of one mole of this. So now that I've made a big old mess down here, I have to erase it because we need some space to do that calculation. So we're calculating the molar mass. So we looked at the formula. There are 13 carbons. A mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams. There's 18 hydrogens. Each mole of hydrogen atoms weighs 1.008 grams. And then two moles of oxygen. 
So we add all that up. I would encourage you to write it down like this because sometimes you have a brain fart and you choose the wrong number or you do something there that's wrong. So write it down and then do it twice on your calculator because there's a lot of numbers and it's easy to push a button wrong. And it's a shame to get an exam problem wrong because you pushed a button wrong. So 206.274 grams is equal to one mole of this compound. Now what I usually do with the sig figs on these um, molar masses is if I'm using four sig figs for each of these guys, I'm going to say this has four, and we'll call it good. You want to use, though, you want to use these extra digits because you don't want to do any rounding until you get to the end and are reporting the answer. So that comes up here. One mole is 206.274 grams. And then what do we do over here? Atoms and moles. Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Come on. So now we get out our calculators, and we've got 200 times 1 EE minus 3, divided by 206.274 times 6.022 EE23. And this is equal to, um, how many significant figures should I round my answer to? Four. This has four, that has four, this has four. We're going to go with four. So 5.8, it says 388, so that's going to round up to nine times 10 to the 20th atoms. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I've been using the numbers up there and uh -huh. it's been changing the last significant Okay, so she's been using the uh, longer masses from the periodic table. And then in the answer, the last significant figure is different. That's okay. This is an uncertain digit. And so depending on what you use, you could end up with a slightly different number. If it's different in the last significant figure, that's OK. If it's different somewhere else, then we maybe have a problem and need to look into it. But that essentially is a rounding error that's happening because I'm using rounded um, atomic masses or molar masses. Um, and I do that mostly for convenience. If you have a periodic table that has more digits, then use them. On the exam, I'm going to provide you with a periodic table. If you want to use the numbers up here, if you can see them conveniently from where you're sit sitting, you go right ahead. In a multiple choice answer, though, recognize that if your answer is just different in that last digit, it's not a problem. And I wouldn't call it a problem in an open-ended problem where you're, asked, you're, where you're actually writing down the number either. Question?